the last part I want to talk about, uh, like, what would be your, um, your assignment, uh, which is basically to take a uh, parametric object that you've created uh, and essentially uh, use it inside of a nested loop. Okay, and uh, to do that, I mean, you could go ahead and start with your with your object. Um, to do that, though, we have to actually talk about uh, functions in uh, Rhino script. In, um, in order to do that, we have to talk about uh, functions a bit. And a function is just kind of like a container uh, for your code. Uh, it, once you've got an object uh, that you know that you're going to reuse, it's it's useful to to basically turn it into a new Python command. Um, then instead of having to write out all the scripts, you can just implement uh, like that command. So um, really simple idea to make a function here. Let's just call this function. Is to say uh, you know, define. That's def define. And you call this my function. Okay. And uh, basically, you want to list the arguments that you're going to give it. I'll just call this uh, x and y. And then your friendly colon. And then you get into uh, the actual function. So you can use those variables. So when you say my function, that's now the command that you created. And x and y are the variables that you've uh, like placed in there. And uh, we'll we'll get into this more uh, later, but I just want to give you the basic the basic kind of structure. So um, let's just say that my function takes uh, x plus y and returns that value. So they return um, x plus y. Now, in the way that Python works, um, it's important, and you can see that that actually creates a little a little structure that decides, and that says that that's a that's a function. Um, the computer has to read the function uh, before it can use it. It's a little bit different from the way other programming languages, you know, like compile. Uh, so just something to be aware of, because if you place if you use it before it's been created, it's going to return an error. Um, so now we can say my function uh, two three. Actually, I should say, let's say print. We'll do that. Okay. So that outputs five. Okay. Um, you can also have it return a function. I mean, you can have it re return uh, something. So we can say like uh, my number equals uh, x plus y. <clears throat> return my number. That's a little bit better structure than what I had before. And then you can say uh, print my function. So what's different about this is that this function actually outputs a variable, my number, and that it's going to basically print my number. So the result is, is the same, basically. You can verify that. But um, a return statement can be important if you want to return uh, an object or if you want to return a list. Um, you basically want that function when you use it in a uh, in another command to represent that that variable. Um, otherwise, it can simply uh, like basically spit out some output for you. Um, so it's important to know that 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 there's like a distinction. I mean, by and large, a, a function should output uh, something. Um, so the way this works, the way the reason why I want to talk about this is because uh, we want to use a function when we have our our parametric copy. So so we can start with a like a like an object that we created, and let's just draw something. So let's say we have like a house uh, parametric object, and that house uh, is drawn you know from some kind of location. It has a point, and it has a width and a uh, height, and that determines like the size of the house and where it's drawn. Okay. So we could we could do that. We could actually say something like uh, define uh, make house start point. I can spell that right. And uh, let's say house uh, scale. Okay. So those are the two uh, the two variables. Okay. And um, let's see here. So we can say that the the height of the house is dependent upon the uh, the scale of the house and and 
we'll determine that uh, like somewhere else. But basically, it's just one variable that determines the whole scale. So the house scale might be the, the width, and the height of it might be one and a half uh, times that width. Because I'm kind of making a tall kind of row house here. Okay. Then I start to draw my object, but I have to draw it like in like a parametric way. I have to draw it in a way such that when the start point changes, it's actually going to change uh, the way the house is drawn. So let's call this um, the bottom right uh, corner. So it's going to be like here. And we'll say that is going to be... And remember that, uh, so this is going to be a point. What we're going to do is basically take uh, the five kind of points here and we're going to uh, draw a polyline around them to, to actually make the form. And that polyline is going to be the actual uh, house itself. Kind of like the way that I drew this by hand. Okay, so the start point is a point that, that we're going to give it. And um, we're going to take the start point, and that's actually uh, this. And so, uh, and the point, I should say this too, uh, a point is, is a list of, of three things, right? It's an X, a Y, and a Z. So, uh, that particular point that we have here uh, might be 1, 0, 0. It's got uh, 1 in the x. It's actually more like, I guess, 4. Uh, no y and no z. Okay. And um, what we need to do is actually access things within this list for that point, uh, the different, the different, uh, the different, you know, sort of like coordinates. Uh, and we need to modify them. And the way we do that is is with uh, sort of by accessing those parts of that list uh, with an array structure. So you can actually say start point uh, 0 and that would actually give you uh, 4. And start point 1 would give you 0. Okay. So, you know, again, if I, if I, if I say this, it's going to open up this list and get the 0, which is the first number in the list. 1 is the second number, 2 is the third number, because of the way that uh, lists work in the computer. They start counting at 0. So start point 0 is actually going to give me that. And I'm going to take start point 0 and I'm going to add house uh, scale. So it's going to add some number to that, which is going to place that point uh, here. And then start point uh, 1 and start point 2. Because basically, it's just, I'm just going to use the same. And let's go ahead and actually do uh, house scale. Actually, let's just call that 5. That's called 4, because that's what it is right now. So um, we'll look at that later. Okay, and then the, 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 the left uh, bottom left corner is actually the same as this. Only I'm going to subtract uh, house scale. Okay. And then we'll do the uh, top right corner is going to be, and since we've actually got this, uh, these corner points here, uh, it's actually the same uh, x, so it's bottom right corner, 0, and the y is different though, so bottom right corner, 1 plus height, bottom right corner, 2, and then I'll do that, and then we'll do the same for the top left, only it's going to be uh, top left corner. Let me zoom myself here. Uh, bottom left. There we go. Bottom left corner. There's a typo, you'd know it when you run it, right? Okay, uh, two. Okay, so you got those, and then how do we find this middle one? What I'm going to do is um, find the distance between these two points, take half of that distance, and then I'm going to uh, add that distance. So that'll give me the x-coordinate, and then I'm going to add that distance to the y-coordinate. And I'll just pick the top left corner, so let's just call this uh, middle point. <clears throat> Oh, actually, let's let's find the distance first. Uh, uh, top left corner. F. RS distance, and this just takes two points and gives it a distance. So top right corner, and 
and that's divided by 2, we're taking half of that. You can also do times 0.05, it's fine. Okay, middle point is going to be, let's do top left corner, 0, plus uh, dist, and then the y is going to be top left corner, plus dist, uh, top left corner, 1. And then the Z is nothing, it's just top left corner. Two. Okay. Brackets. Okay. And then the last thing is actually going to call this the uh, house form. And polyline. And now you just give it a list of points. So we'll just start from the... Uh, and we'll do this counterclockwise. Uh, corner. Top left corner, middle point, top right corner, bottom right corner, and then we're going to end up at bottom left corner. Okay, and that should probably, oh, actually it wants a list of those, so let's put these in brackets here. There, I want to make sure to obey that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then the last, so that actually creates that uh, function. And then what we want to do is actually choose a location to uh, make our house. Uh, so let's do my start point. It's RS get point. And let's click to select starting point. Okay, and so that's actually used, and then and then we'll go ahead and call our function. So we'll make house start my start point, and actually let's make this separate. So this is the generic form of it. I actually want to do specific variable names, so let's just call this my house scale. Actually, my house scale is going to be yeah. Now we haven't saved it or anything, which is pretty dangerous. Um, delete all this stuff. Okay, so basically we should get a thing that parametrically, if I choose a point, it should draw a house. Ah, perfect. Okay, okay so that works pretty well. Um, and now, and then if you change the scale, you make a bigger house. So pretty. Pretty good. And actually, um, so function make house. And you can just say like um, start point equals out. point on bottom. It's always good to kind of leave yourself kind of a comment so that you understand uh, how your function is supposed to work. So it's a point on the bottom, midpoint of the house, uh, house scale. Uh, half the width of the house, just so that the person knows um, how that's supposed to work. Okay, and then. Uh, so we've got that. We understand how we can we can make that function work. Let's make this uh, work with a loop. So let's say uh, i in range ten. Let's put the make house in there. Make house. And remember, make house needs a point and it needs a scale. And I'm actually going to split this just so I can so I can read this a little better. So my start point is actually where I start. So I'm going to get the x of that start point, and I'm going to add uh, i to it because that's actually going to be this kind of increment. Actually, I'm going to add i 
And that's actually not good. Let's do my house scale. Um, since a house is, my house scale is, is times two, is the width of a house, let's do 2.5 so it gives us a bit of room here. My start point one, my start point two. Wow, it's actually, it's actually looking this up as a uh, list. And then, comma, my house scale. And actually, this is probably just working fine. I j sometimes I split it up so it's easier to read. Okay. In fact, let's just do this here. Okay, so I'm going to click somewhere. And it should make a row of uh, 10 houses. Actually, yeah, 10 houses. Let's do, let's go back to four here. Ah, perfect. Okay. And, you know, with some modification to what's going on in start point uh, one here, uh, you could do um, a nested loop that does this parametrically. But, uh, but that's, that's pretty... That'll, that should get you set up for the assignment pretty well. So I want you to make your parametric, make your object parametric, make it based on uh, a user-defined uh, starting point, uh, program it as a function, okay, makes it compact, and then use a nested looping structure uh, to make copies of it. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.